Hello, my name is Tom Lee and welcome to my demonstration of the patented bite tray. The bite tray is used for doing interclusal records such as centric relation, protrusive, or even lateral border records. There is a little half moon here that you can push down and then bend forward to create a little finger stop here to help hold the tray. There's also little serrated edges on the side where you can grab the tray if you need to. There's also a little perforation here in the front where you can cut this with a pair of scissors and use it with a leaf gauge. So you can just cut this section out if you want like this. And now we can use this with a leaf gauge or a Lucia jig and take an eccentric relation record. But we're going to use our recommended method which is a lower compound jig. So in doing that what we want to do first is size the tray. We can cut this back just distal to the first molar. So I'm going to cut this back a little ways here. And so it's a dead soft aluminum, which makes it easy to just cut real easy. So we have that. Now we can actually use an adhesive on the tray. And this will help the bite registration material stick well to the tray. So we have a nice coat of adhesive on both the upper and lower occlusal surfaces. We can actually air dry that a little bit. Then we can go into the patient, line up the dental midline on the front of the bite tray to the dental midline, have the patient bite up and crush the tray. Open please. This will now form the tray to their occlusal surface better to minimize the amount of opening of the centric record. We can now add or dry the upper side again. And we can add a very thin layer of bite registration material to the upper side to get a registration of the upper teeth. So I'm going to just do a very thin layer of this. This is fast setting material so we got to work real fast. So open please. I want you to just tap tap and open. And I'm going to hold this against the upper teeth while the material sets. And when you go to remove the tray, I don't want you just pulling down on the tray because you might warp the tray. So we like to put our finger underneath here and on the side, and then we just kind of shake, get a little nervous, you know, help break it loose. So that now we can see we have registration of the maxillary teeth to the bite tray. We can now dry the lower side of the tray in preparation for the compound. If any material is oozed through the holes, on the tray, we can take a little lab knife and cut these little nodules away. And now we can actually, if you would just hold this torch for me right there, we can now heat some compound for an anterior jig. So we're going to heat up a nice big centimeter or so spot of this, get it nice and smoking hot so it'll stick to the tray real good. And then I get to where it's just slumping and we just get it all globbed right there in the front of the tray. Thank you. Now we can actually temper this in hot tap water because we don't want to burn the patient. At this point if I want I can even kind of move it around or form it how I want. And then we're going to come back in the patient's mouth. I'm going to hold this against the upper teeth while I roll the lower lip back, push back on the chin, have them slowly close, slowly close, slowly close, slowly close, and open. And we open all the way, remove the tray, and we can see we have an index of the lower teeth here in the compound. We're going to go ahead and chill that in cold water. Then we'll actually go ahead and shave this back a little bit, just getting the index of those teeth. So I'm going to do that on the side. So now you can see we have the centric index here in the compound. Again, we'll try it back in the patient's mouth. We'll have them bite to see if they can find that index. Bite back, your back teeth. Open, please. Okay, close up. You go right into that index. Open and close, bite, bite, bite. Does that feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. We wanna to check to make sure we don't have any posterior contact with the posterior teeth, which we don't. So we're good to go to add the bite registration material to the lower posterior half of the tray. In preparation for that, we'll go ahead and air dry the lower half of the tray.
Now we're going to inject a much larger amount on the posterior area because we do have that space between the posterior teeth. So I'm going to inject a much more larger quantity of bite registration material onto both sides. And we go back into the patient's mouth. Index against the upper teeth, have them bite into their index, bite back. They bite into that index while I hold the tray up, making sure they don't clench, relax, but bite up in there. And we'll hold that in place while the material sets. Again, while I hold the tray against the upper teeth, have the patient open their mouth. Now I can go ahead and remove the tray. And we do have registration of the posterior teeth into the bite record. So this will be used for mounting the lower cast when we get to the laboratory procedures. In preparation in doing the protrusive check bite, the upper surface of the bite tray is exactly the same as the centric record. The only difference will be the lower compound jig index. Instead of a centric index, we're going to do a protrusive. Actually, I'm going to do both. I'm going to have a retrude and go into a centric index, and then open, come forward, come forward until it's edge to edge, and have her bite up until she's in edge to edge position. This will indicate that that particular tray is a protrusive record versus the one that only has one index is our centric record. So I'll go ahead and have the patient just go ahead and hold my torch here for me again. While I go ahead and heat up some more compound for an anterior compound jig on the bite tray. Again, a little dab won't do you. Get a nice section of this heated up really good. And just as it starts to slump, come right over to the tray, smoking hot. And you want to come right on out to the front of the tray with this too, because that's where they're going to be body more edge to edge. Thank you. We'll go ahead and temper this in hot tap water just so we don't burn the patient. After tempering hot tap water, I can actually even mold this a little more anteriorly on the tray if I need to. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to place this in. I'm going to roll the lower lip back again, back with the jaw, up, slow, oops, slowly, 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 up, 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 stop, open, now come forward, slide forward, slide forward, slide forward, slide forward, up, 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 and open. I'll take this out. And we can see we have both a centric index and a protrusive index. So I'm going to go ahead and chill this with cold water and shave this back a little bit with a sharp scalpel. Again, now we can see that I cut this back, we can see both the centric index and the protrusive index. And we like to go between five to seven millimeters forward, which this is about approximately five millimeters. So we're ready to add the bite registration material to the posterior area to finalize the protrusive record. We'll go ahead and dry off the lower surface of the bite tray. So we're actually ready to actually add our bite registration material to the lower posterior half. Knowing that this is a protrusive check bite, you're gonna have much more space between the posterior teeth. So this time we're gonna add quite a bit of bite registration material. Really build it up. Wanna make sure we capture the teeth. Come back in and I'm going to guide the patient forward into that protrusive check bite. Bite up, bite up, bite up, bite up, bite up into it. Find your index. Find the index in there. Okay. And then we hold this tray against the upper teeth, making sure they don't clench too much, but yet making sure the jaw doesn't relax and separate from the tray. And we'll just hold this in place until the material sets. Once the material sets, again, you just hold the tray against the upper teeth, have the patient open their mouth, separates it from the bite tray. We can now remove this, and we can see that we do have indentations of the posterior teeth for programming our protrusive pathway into the articulator when we get to the laboratory.